Okay, so I'm recording this uh, this training video for my automatic transmissions class. Uh, we'll be addressing the uh, two task sheets on this video here. First task sheet we're going to do is uh, task sheet uh, C751, and it deals with inspecting bushings and determining uh, necessary action we need to take. Now, when you do an automatic transmission, uh, when you build one, you want to do a visual inspection on all the bushings. Now, bushings do an important role. They support rotating shafts. Uh, they help direct oil to their designated places for lube and, in some cases, um, to uh, apply pressure to uh, clutch packs and such. So right here, we have a... Uh, this, this bushing right here is called the, uh, it's the front stator support bushing. This is a stator of support, goes into the uh, torque converter to support the stator with the one-way clutch inside the torque converter. And uh, this right here on the input shaft, this is a corresponding bushing surface that goes with this bushing right here. If this shaft and this, there's another bushing in the bottom of the pump that corresponds to this surface. If this shaft is allowed to walk around too much then what you get is uh, you can get pressure loss down here at these rings and also these big rings for the forward clutch these rings for your lockup and uh, if it walks around too much these ring grooves these surfaces will also damage the inside of the stator so we you lose hard parts you lose major components and you have to replace them then the overhaul gets real expensive so what I'm going to show you how to do is just show you the procedure for measuring one set of bushings uh, good rule of thumb, if you have to change out two or three bushings, let's just do the whole set. They're pretty cheap, the customer gets a better overhaul, and you're not rolling around at night thinking, man, is that thing going to come back in a week or two, all burned up. So, so you know, just do it good the first time, and uh, you're doing all right. So remember, this is the front stator support bushing, and we'll do the input shaft down at the front of the input shaft. This part goes into your turbine in your, in, in your torque converter. So what you're going to do is I'm going to use this... Um, let me use this uh, uh, veneer caliper, dial dial caliper. So I'm going to put this thing in here, and I'm going to put it inside the bushing. And I'm going to use this portion here to measure the inside diameter of the bushing. Then I'll transfer over to the shaft and measure with the outside portion. And uh, I'll put it in there, pull it against the sides, make sure it's got good contact. And then I pull it out. And right here, let's see if I can read this. My eyeballs are getting old here. And I've got uh, 1.012 or um, 1 and 12 thousandths of an inch. Now I'll rotate it over to this shaft here. And I'm going to have to close it up a little bit. But I've got uh, just slightly over 1 and uh, 10 thousandths of an inch. So we've got pretty close to 2 thousandths clearance. Or just a little over 1 thousandths clearance. So that's pretty good. And I can tell by looking at this bushing, I've still got a pretty good groove, lube groove in it. And uh, I think that would fly. Now, uh, you have to kind of make the judgment call as a builder. Uh, what's what's burnt? What's not? Does it look like it had a lube problem? And you would you would want to look at individual bushings. Uh, some of them you can't get to. So, you know, you can change them, but you can't get a measuring device in there unless it's a snap gauge or something like that. So, But just to get an overall feel for how you do this, this is how you measure your... Uh, Clearance. So the uh, specs on here, we're within a uh, we're under two thousandths clearance. I'm okay with that. I think we'll go with that, and that's that's pretty good. So that'll be your specs for your uh, for measuring the clearance on that thing. Okay, so that that's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Just remember, they do a lot of things like direct fluid for lube, also help sealing in a way by keeping the components all uh, spinning nice and centered where they're supposed to be. So kind of like. Uh, camshaft bearings or crank bearings on a gas engine they do the same thing they lube keep the crank from knocking around so uh, always consider those don't ever let them slide by you because they will come back to haunt you okay all right so next thing we're going to do i'll use this uh i'll use this uh nope not this part i'm going to use the planetary this is task sheet uh c752 and this is inspecting and measuring planetary gear set assembly so your planetary gear set assembly. Um, this is kind of the uh, this is kind of the workhorse of the transmission. Everything else is controls, but it all comes down to this guy right here. If this thing uh, gives up on you, you're not going anywhere anyway. These are usually failing because of lube problems, things like that. So we got three components. 
And some of you guys might be out in the field already. You may already know this. Hopefully you know this. But anyway, this is your planetary. This is your carrier, this big old framework. And then these are your pinions right here. These are your short pinions, long pinions, or your forward pinions and your rear pinions, reverse, reverse pinions. Okay, uh, this is my forward sun gear. It fits down in there and engages the short pinions. But as you can see down in there, I've got two sets. There's my short pinions, my long pinions. They're all engaged together. So if I'm turning the short ones, I'm turning the long ones. But if I don't have anything applied on this forward sun gear, then it's just kind of overrunning. It's not really uh, affecting anything. The other part of it is my reverse sun gear. This is going to engage the upper portion of the long pinions. And so these two, I don't put the bearing on here, but these two sun gears will rotate independently of each other. And so they can both sit down inside, inside that planet like that. And I can drive one or the other. Okay, so we're gonna check this. And then the last portion of your sun gear set, you have your planet with the pinions. Okay, carrier with the pinions forward sun gear, reverse sun gear, and then we also have the ring gear. And you see it's an internal gear. It's an internal gear, an internal ring gear. There's a fancy term for it called a uh, annulus gear. And uh, this is what the carrier has to ride in. Now these are the ones, this gear is the one that will actually contact your long pinions right there. They're the only ones make contact with it. So this is always the output. There's no choice. So. What we're going to do, the first thing we'll do is a visual inspection. And if you notice, I'm going to look up in here and I will get my little scribe here. And this unit has some damage on it. And if you look, it's kind of like going to the dentist. Let me get something here. I just pulled a nasty bit out of there. Here. There's a little chip in this tooth right there. And if I look around, I can see I've got something went through these teeth right here. And caused a little bit of damage. I don't know if you can see that little shiny spot. So sometimes what happens: a piece of trash, uh, a bearing, someplace, something broke, and it's kind of like um, you're eating something hard. You, you bite down on a rock, you're going to break more than just one tooth. You're going to break several of them. So if you get a piece of bearing or something going around through here, it's not only going to contact these teeth; it's going to contact everything. So that thing's going to run. These things mesh all together. So they can do a lot of damage. So this one here is damaged, so I make note of it. I would change that. I wouldn't run it again because, like I say, it's going to come back and bite me. My sun gear, big chip out of it right there. This is a hardened surface, and uh, it feels pretty good, but then I run into this part here where I can gouge it. That hardened surface is broken. This one here would be uh, scrap metal. Okay, so that's no good. Uh, I'll set it aside again. You see the bushing right there. That can be measured. So I'll set that one aside. Now I check out my planetary, my carrier, my pinions on my carrier, excuse me. And I'll rotate those around. And this probably from a different set because it looks fairly good. I don't see any uh, notches or anything, any nicks on it anywhere. So this one I wouldn't be afraid of. I would be, uh, I would be okay with rerunning this. You also want to check that band surface right there. Make sure that's nice and smooth for the lower burst band to apply. Now, I'm going to measure the clearance on these pinions. And uh, on this particular, uh, on my pinions, I like to keep them, the specs, I like to keep it someplace around, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe uh, 10,000, I think, to about, I think they allow you about 15,000, so I don't have the specs here. So what I usually do is try to fall someplace towards the uh, low end, and uh, I can just stick, I let the, I turn the planet upside down, and I let the pinions, let gravity take over, and then I'll slide it in between the gear and the washers in the carrier frame. And this one here gives me right about 10 thousandths clearance. I'm just dragging it a little bit. And each gear feels the same way. And so I wouldn't be afraid of running that. That's 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 gonna be okay right there. You wanna check all six of them. And that would get it. So I'm running about 10 thousandths clearance for my students. You would write that on your, uh, on your task sheet. Uh, just following the procedure of sliding the feeler gauge in between the gear and the frame the carrier and then uh but we did the visual inspection on the sun gear the ring gear 
no washers involved. We have some bearings going here, but uh, this is one bearing that you cannot. You have to almost second guess this bearing down here. This trap down inside. You have to make a judgment call on that. Uh, if that thing gives up, that's where the damage comes from. The little bearings come out of there, and they'll wipe out all these teeth and take out all, all basically all four components on this uh, planetary set. Okay, but this is uh, between the choice between a Simpson and a Ravino set. At the top of your sheet, it's going to ask you which one. This is the Ravino, R-A-V-I-G-N-E-A-U-X. So, see, I had a lot of practice spelling that. So, this is the Ravino set you're checking out. So, just follow those procedures, and it uh, works out pretty good. And that should, that should get you for all the uh, information you'll need on these two task sheets. So, enjoy.